Hi. You might remember last year we brought you the story of Professor Richard Scolia, the melanoma expert dealing with brain cancer. Since then, he and his research colleague went on to be named the 2024 Australians of the Year, not just for their groundbreaking work in skin cancer, which is saving countless lives, but also because of their efforts trialling a revolutionary but risky treatment for Professor Scolia's tumour. It's now 10 months since his original diagnosis for an illness that usually carries a life expectancy of up to 14 months. And so, of course, everyone is desperate to know how things are going. It's now 10 months out since my tumour first presented. Thank you for picking us up. We know the average time to recurrence for the nasty sort of brain tumour I've got is about six months. So I'm a little nervous about whether anything gets picked up. Yeah, just part of the journey that I'm on. Um. The treatment I'm, I'm having has never been tried before in brain cancer. No one knew what it was going to do. People were nervous. But when you're faced with a certain death, it's a no-brainer no for me. I'm on my way for another MRI scan, looking for recurrent tumours, the main thing, but also treatment effects. People all around the world will be watching very closely because if they can have success, it will revolutionise the treatment of brain cancer. It will be a breakthrough, a medical breakthrough. If the scan's clear today, it'll be celebration in my heart and, and hopefully many other people. I can enjoy more of my life and, and help future brain cancer patients. Another MRI scan done, Gary. So I'm going to wait for the result later on. Okay. Uh, hopefully today or uh, during the course of the week, but fingers crossed. Thanks for your support, Gary. I really appreciate it. Dad hasn't slowed down since he was diagnosed. Sorry about that. It would be really easy for him to just sort of stop all of the things that made him who he is and put all of his worry into thinking about the cancer. But it hasn't stopped him at all. Richard is my closest colleague, but he's also one of my best friends. Getting into training for a triathlon, that's Richard brought me into that, and I love it. When Richard was diagnosed, some of my close colleagues were saying, uh, don't be Richard's medical oncologist, be his friend. And I'm thinking, stuff that. I'm not using 15 years of my bloody hard work, like hard, long hours work, not to apply it to my friend. What are the rules here? Richard and Georgina are the co-medical directors of the Melanoma Institute Australia. One a pathologist, one a medical oncologist. They have spent decades pioneering new treatments for melanoma patients. Richard Scully is my name. Nice to meet you. We've taken everything, absolutely every bit of knowledge from melanoma, and we've thrown it at Richard's tumour. Oh, I'm in the surgical suite at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, where I've actually worked for 25 years. Um, I'm more than happy to be the, the guinea pig to, to do this. In fact, I see it as an opportunity to hopefully make my life better, but to blow open that brain cancer field and transform it for all brain cancer patients. I guess in truth I'm, I'm anxious and nervous about how it's going to turn out, but I know I'm in great hands with the brain It is dangerous. It may result in worse outcomes. But there's a lot of hope for Richard, and I want him around. I want him around long term. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I'd come up here every day in the summer hallways. It was a very long session thing because you'd always come here and there'd always be people you knew here. Rich is my younger brother that we grew up in Riverside in Launceston, Tasmania. Our parents 
took us on lots of travel and walking within Tasmania. And did all the normal things that people did, kicking the footy, playing footy, riding bikes. Every summer, we'll go to stay in a caravan park in Olveston on the northwest coast. You know, we breed our skin cancer, basically, by going to the beach all day, every day, and playing cricket on the beach, going for, I don't know, 10 swims sometimes a day. Richard studied medicine at the University of Tasmania and then ultimately ended up in Sydney. Good morning, Richard. Morning, gentlemen. The tumour extends down into the reticular dermis, 15 millimetres. Richard quickly established himself as someone with an interest in melanoma and uh, I encouraged him to develop this interest. So really, Richard, this is a pretty nasty looking tumour we have. Yeah, absolutely, it's... Now, Richard is undoubtedly one of the top melanoma pathologists in the world at the present time. The world's biggest melanoma research and treatment centre has opened in Sydney. Basically. I joined the team in 2009 as a medical oncologist. At that time, there was nothing for melanoma, no drug therapies. Patients in my waiting room, I would only ever know them for six to nine months because they died. And it was a rare patient who would survive beyond a year or two. It's an 82-year-old gentleman with an extensive history of multi-recurrent lentitis. It was essentially incurable. And that all changed with the use of immunotherapies in around 2010. So what's our opinion? surgeons, head and neck surgeons. With immunotherapy, we stimulate the immune system in a very specific way so that the immune system can see the enemy, that's the cancer, and kill it. OK, happy with that? Everyone happy? And 15 years ago, if you had melanoma that had spread around your body, the survival rates were terrible. Less than 5% of people were alive five years later. And now it's more than 55% of people as, uh, alive five years later. Seems to be a lot of nodding around yeah, okay. the room, Georgina. Yeah. And that's... During that time, the Institute grew. So did the drug therapies that worked in melanoma. So did the research program. And with all of that activity and knowledge in melanoma and cancer, we could not but help apply it to Richard's glioblastoma. In May, I went to Poland, to Krakow, to lecture in a, a conference. My wife Katie came with me. We climbed up into the mountains in southern Poland and that was incredible scenery. The next day, I woke up in the morning not, not feeling right, like I was about to pass out or even die. I, 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 um, and I just... I, I, like, I, that's all I remember. I had a, a seizure and um, fell onto the floor. I had a red mark on my head where I must have grazed it on the carpet when I hit the floor. They transferred him to the university hospital in Krakow where he had an MRI scan of the brain. Katie, his wife, rang me and said, there's a lesion to which I gasped and knew, oh, what, you know, when you, when you have a seizure and there's an MRI with a lesion in a, in a 56 year old man, which is Richard, it's usually not great news. I sent it, the scans straight to Brinda Shivalingam and said, what do you think? I just had one quick look at it and knew what we were dealing with. The biopsy definitively told us that this was an IDH wild-type glioblastoma, the most aggressive type of primary brain cancer. I knew what that meant, that certain death. I just, I just had, oh, just to come to terms with Richard, I knew immediately he had it. A bad tumour. To be facing a death sentence, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not ready for this. Um, yeah, I love my life. I love my family. I've got three teenage children. I love my work. I love my colleagues. I love contributing to, to society. I don't want to die yet. It was definitely stressful, definitely a shock. 
immediately discussions started about, OK, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to move forward with treatment? The survival time for glioblastoma just with standard treatment is in the order of about 12 to 14 months. Standard therapy hasn't changed in 18 years. Radiation and chemotherapy is just to prolong life a little bit better. It doesn't cure anyone. I started to hatch a plan and think about how we could treat Richard's tumour by using everything I had learnt and developed in melanoma to bear on how we might approach Richard's glioblastoma. So the plan was to give immunotherapy before the tumour is removed from Richard's brain. This is completely contrary to standard treatment. Normally everyone says, quick, quick, we must remove the tumour as soon as we can. But we believe that by giving the immunotherapy while the tumour is still there, it has a better chance of, of developing that immune response. IDH wild type, um, a promoter to it mutated. Even though it's risky, and it is risky, I just give him a whiff of the idea and he went, yep, I want this, yes. Hey, Emma. He's truly first in the world. It is experimental therapy. We have no data on what will happen in terms of prolonging his survival. I had some blood out of this um, this morning, so you want to do People were pretty nervous about it, and, and to be honest, there was quite a bit of resistance initially to, to get people on board. How long do you give it to go in? Half an hour. There's risks in, in having this form of therapy. You might get swelling of the tumour, and there's risks when you give subsequent doses that you can actually go into the liver failure. But there's also an upside risk that, that I might live longer. Thank you very much. And there's a small chance that I that I could be even cured. Hello. Hi. Nice How to see you? you. Yeah. It just feels right to do this. For me to be the guinea pig, for Georgina to lead this as an opportunity for us together to make a difference in brain cancer like what we've done in melanoma. So your liver tests were good this morning? Oh, great, yeah. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, OK, I guess yeah. If it wasn't Richard, it couldn't happen because he understands the risks of doing things differently and he understands the potential benefit. Two weeks after the immunotherapy, he had a big operation to remove most of the tumour that was in his brain. It's a difficult tumour to operate on. It is very infiltrative and invasive through the brain and it sends out little microscopic tentacles of cells. That's what makes it very difficult or near impossible to surgically remove every last bit of it and get every cell. That, that's going to be my boundary, OK? I, I don't think we need to go further back. I don't want to go back into the hippocampus. Yeah, yeah, what you just said to me makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah. I'm a little nervous about the operation, craniotomy, I'm having to remove as much of my tumour as possible without leaving too much functional deficit. When you're losing part of your brain that, yeah, well, I was scared shitless, to be honest, that I'd be left with um, functional problems. You want to preserve Richard as Richard, but get out as much tumour as possible. It's stressful anyway, but to operate on a friend and a colleague is incredibly stressful. Brenda's just text. It is two o'clock. All done, just doing a final diagnostic scan and then we'll wake him up. Yay! <laughs> Fantastic. I better just send a thumbs up. It makes me cry and I love heart and stars. Yep. Good. Ah, Amy, my eldest daughter, you are so wonderful. Can you give me kisses? Thanks for coming in to see me. Um, to be honest, I feel 
better than what I did after the operation I had two and a bit weeks ago where I had biopsies. Yeah, yeah mentally I feel like I'm still on the board. My wife's testing me out with a whole lot of um, mental capacity. What's my BP? I'm 22 over 65. Perfect. The What's the heart rate? Heart 59. Wow. Not as fit as I normally am, but not too <laughs> bad. Dad was talking normally, joking with us, interacting. He was telling me how I had to improve my resume <laughs> about um, an hour after you got out of surgery. I'm really happy with how everything went. Yeah. And, you know, it's always a bonus when you wake up and you're perfectly fine. Oh, okay. Well, Chris, that's it. <laughs> yeah, why does it work? It's you. <coughs> Same scar, hair's still there. Ah. Fashionable purple, can I take a photo? <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, you haven't good. taken the Richard out of the Richard. The two people have supported me so much in sorting out my marriage. I got out of hospital two days after surgery. Not nearly as knocked about as what I'd expected. So thanks, Brenda. It's now what? Four weeks after I had that surgery, I've started on um, radiotherapy um, last week, and that seems to be seems to be going well. And and how would, would you say mild, moderate, or fulminant? <laughs> the big results that we were really excited with was a huge infiltration of immune cells into the tumour. That's really important. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, that means that those immune cells were somehow activated in the body. Hopefully, what they're doing is killing the cancer. Richard is having ongoing immunotherapy. Richard, we're doing vaccine number two today. And the next stage of the plan is to give Richard a personalised vaccine. Fine, apart from a bloody sore arm afterwards. We look at what's specific to that individual person's cancer and try to get the immune system to recognise that specific cancer. All done. Right, nice and tight. Hey. The world's melanoma and immunotherapy expert. It's a radical treatment. We hope it works, but it's such an uncertain area that we, we don't really know at the moment. And I'm sure even he and Georgina, for all their brilliance, don't exactly know how well it's going to work. We're going to be checking your liver, your kidney function, as well as your full blood count. But there isn't a single part of Richard that has not been analysed and probed during the course of this treatment. Maybe do a short course. I think everyone is watching and waiting to see how well Richard does. Uh, yesterday, Christian and I had a discussion about creating a visual timeline. So we're trying to back everything up with science to show that what we're doing, if it does happen to work, why it's working. Or if it doesn't work, why does it not work? So that's the important piece in this. It's the science, because only then can we use this data to help other patients? Meaning, next steps, clinical trial. We have to get clinical trials up front. His drug, his vaccine, and then... All the results we have so far are positive. I have to be honest, I am hoping that we could cure him. I know it, it's unlikely, I'm a realist, but I also know that these drugs are phenomenal. So here we are today, four months after my diagnosis, with incredible guidance from Georgina, supported by the Melanoma Institute team and unwavering support from my family, for which I can never thank them enough. Since Richard's diagnosis, he and Georgina have been on a roller coaster, really, trying to get the word out about what they're trying to do. We have generated in 10 weeks discoveries that would normally take many years. We hope for nothing more than both of us being able to stand here again this time next year as proof that the breakthroughs we've outlined today and our calls for change have saved lives. He's being very brave and uh, putting on a strong outward show of strength. And um, all his friends and colleagues are doing their very best to support him in that but I know that he, he struggles a lot. You can chop them up into dice and put them in the tabouli, I think, if you... All right, I can do, do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel a little bad that, um, that at times I'm, you know, irritable or, yeah, or my temper's sometimes raised. I think, hey, my personality before this happened, I'd, I'd more 
reserved and I wouldn't wouldn't fire up about things so much as what I do now. And part of it must be because you can see this defined period of how much you're likely to be alive for and I feel like I want to get things finished off. I want to get the, 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 the tasks completed and that's all aspects of life. What time do you get home? 9.30. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very late. Party. what was it? My kids are starting to get a sense of how serious it is. So I get that's hard on the kids and they, at times, we have emotional moments. Oh, wow, that's and amazing. I yeah. didn't know that. And so all the water was pouring out of them. Mum has been a rock for everybody, including Dad. Why don't you put them over there? Even though she herself is dealing with so much. Yeah, so, Matt, you know you only turn it once, yeah. right? And yeah, but I'm Mum is also a pathologist like Dad. And, and she's happy for Dad to keep pursuing it because he knows that it has the potential to make a difference to so many people. It's a possibility for me that this could be my last chance to see family and friends in Tasmania, and that's part of the reason why I'm so excited to be here. First time I've seen you in person since my brain cancer diagnosis. Well, it was a bit of a shock. No, a bit. <laughs> More than a bit. The length of survival is a complete unknown at this stage. So you scared? Oh. <laughs> No, it's not no. healing up pretty well. We know that, you know, if he sort of gets to six, nine months, 12 months without recurrence, it's looking promising that in, at the very least it's um, extending survival. The most anxious thing is is your tumour going to come back? And that the main way that that's detected is through an MRI scan. It's a rather stressful waiting period for, for Richard and all those who care deeply about him. The longer you go on without recurrence, the more likely it's going to happen because it almost inevitably, inevitably does. So, yeah, I'm certainly more scared about it now than what I was a few months ago. We're so engaged in the research aspects of what we're doing. I wonder whether we've processed the implications if the therapy doesn't work. Hey, George. Hey, I just got news. What? Your scan's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great news. Yeah, I know. Yes. So, um, no recurrence, which is good. Ah, oh, fantastic. No recurrence. It's early days. Still, um, six months, not that early. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's good. So what, what we want, though, is this in another few months. The 2024 Australian of the Year, I'm proud to announce, is Professor Georgina Long and Professor Richard Scolia. From where I stand, with a future now measured in months rather than decades, it's impossible for me to properly articulate how proud and hopeful that this also makes me. We never imagined our life work would lead us here. Thank you, Australia, for bestowing us with this wonderful honour. It's not every day you get to speak to our Australians of the year. Prevention is better than cure. Slip, slop, slap. Physically, he seems to be doing really well, but there's no doubt that there are toxicities to worry about. These drugs can turn on the immune system that then attacks your own body. And the toxicity itself can be life-threatening. I do worry that he pushes himself a little bit too much, and we've had many chats about this, about slowing down, about taking a bit of time to absorb this. And, and also resting your body somewhat, just because Richard is so active. It's a little bit of rest might actually help him. Be on a 
was the last three weeks probably been the toughest period that I've had so far in my brain cancer journey. I've had um, partial seizures quite commonly, actually sometimes like 10 times or more a day. Um, I've had three episodes where I've totally passed out to it. Now I'm on anti-seizure medication to bring things under control. And I'm very thankful I've had no seizures since then. I rode, I don't know, 450 k's in the Tour de Cure last <laughs> weekend and I can run and do the things I love doing and um, spending time with my wonderful family and enjoying life as, as best I can given the circumstances. Professor Richard Scolia has shared remarkable news in his fight against brain cancer, revealing no recurrence of the disease in 10 months. To be able to get this far through, now we're up to 10 months without any recurrence of my tumour, I'm blown away. This is not what I expected. So this is great news. In this area medially, which we were worried about, looks a little better, which is nice. To have the scan on the 18th of March show that there's no recurrence is remarkable. It's, it's fantastic. It's great for Richard um, and gives us all a lot of hope. It's pretty good, isn't it? Fantastic. So fingers crossed it stays like this for a little while yeah. longer. It's, it's but in good. cancer, it's very rare to use the word cure. You have to test your hypothesis in a larger number of people. And with Richard's case particularly, we have to wait much more time to say whether this treatment worked in an and of itself. From my side of the spectrum, if the next scan is clear, I'll be celebrating um, on, all, on all stops. You know, that would be incredible to get to 12 months without a recurrence. Um, yeah, that'd be a major milestone for me personally. I think like any cancer patient with a terminal condition, there are ups and downs. This switch in roles has been a, a huge change for us. Me now as medical oncologist and as the person running and leading his immunotherapy and for him now as the patient, this is very difficult. But every month that we get with a clear scan, we're, we're incredibly pleased and happy for Richard. Cheers. Great job, Don't team. The, the field owes him a great debt of gratitude. What Richard's doing has uh, advanced the treatment of glioblastoma generally in just a few months by what would otherwise have taken 10 years, maybe more. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thank you. I'm accepting of this unfortunate, nasty tumour that I've got that is almost certainly going to come back at some stage. Made but I am very proud that it's going to make a difference for future brain cancer patients. Yeah, and you know what a legacy to to be able to leave, even if it doesn't doesn't cure me. I might go to do that. <laughs> There's only two tickets, buddy. You've been no, asked. Three. Three. Legacy is also about family, and I guess the example of the drive and the determination and the. Uh, the need to change things for the better, for for the, the wider world, that's a legacy.